This video introduces the phasor addition rule for adding up sinusoids of the same frequency. So our objectives are first of all to define what we mean by a phasor and then to use these phasors to sum sinusoids of the same frequency but arbitrary amplitudes and phases. Recall that we can express a real valued sinusoid in terms of a complex valued sinusoid. If I have x of t, I have amplitude a cosine 2 pi f t plus phase phi, I can express that as the real part of a complex number a e to the j 2 pi f t. And a is equal to lowercase a e to the j phi. So that's the amplitude e to the j phase. This uppercase a is what we're going to call a phasor. If the frequency of the sinusoid is known, then the phasor A completely describes and defines the sinusoid. And this phasor represents a point in the complex plane of distance from the origin, lowercase a, and angle with respect to the positive real axis of phi. Now this phasor representation for a sinusoid is useful in any problem that involves single frequency analysis such as commonly occurs in the analysis of electrical circuits or filters in signal processing and so on. And we'll derive that in the case of two sinusoids. So suppose I have a signal y of t which is a sum of sinusoids one having amplitude a and phase phi, the other one of the same frequency f but having amplitude b and phase theta. Now I can write each of these individual sinusoids in terms of a complex sinusoid with the phasor uppercase a being a e to the j phi, the amplitude and phase of the first sinusoid, and then the second sinusoid being represented in terms of a complex sinusoid with phasor b, where b is equal to the amplitude lowercase b times the phase e to the j theta. Now when we're adding complex numbers, you can add the real parts or you can take the real part of the sum. Because when you add complex numbers, you add the real parts and you add the imaginary parts. Here I have a sum of the real parts. Well, that's equivalent to the real part of the sum, as I've depicted below. And we can factor out the e to the j 2 pi f t from both term to have a plus b, we'll call that a new phase or c, times e to the j 2 pi f t. And c is the sum of the phasors of the individual sinusoids. The phasor of the sum is the sum of the phasors. Let's illustrate this with an example. Let's suppose we're going to add up two sinusoids of frequency f. The first one is cosine 2 pi f t times the square root of 3. So it is amplitude square root of 3 and phase is 0. The second one is cosine 2 pi f t plus pi over 2. So this one has amplitude 1 and phase pi over 2. So I can write these in phasor form as a sum of the real parts where my first sinusoid has phasor square root of 3 e to the j 0 or 1. So I'm not explicitly writing the e to the j term here. And the second one has phasor e to the j pi over 2. So the amplitude in this case is 1. Again, I'm not going to write that. So the phasor of the sum of these two is the sum of the individual phasors because the taking the real parts commutes with addition. And therefore, my sinusoid, y of t, is going to have square root of 3 plus e to the j pi over 2 as its phasor. Now let's do the sum of those two terms. So square root of 3 in the complex plane is on the real axis at distance square root of 3. e to the j pi over 2 is on the imaginary axis at unit distance. And if we add these two phasors, we can do that using vector addition as I've sketched here. And I have a right triangle whose one leg is square root of 3, other leg is 1, therefore the hypotenuse has distance 2 and the angle turns out to be pi over 6. Therefore, I know that y of t is the, expressed in terms of a complex sinusoid with phasor 2e to the j pi over 6, 
and converting that back to a cosine, it's simply 2 cosine 2 pi ft plus pi over 6. Now this phasor addition rule applies to the sum of an arbitrary number of sinusoids. And I've written that down on this slide here. The parts in red are what you can pay attention to. The parts in black are showing the steps are the same as with two sinusoids, taking the sum of the real parts as being the real part of the sum. So if my individual sinusoids, suppose there's capital N of them, and they have amplitudes A sub I and phases phi sub I, then the sum is going to be a sinusoid of the same frequency f, but have amplitude b and phase gamma, where the phasor b e to the j gamma is the sum i equals 1 to n a i e to the j phi i. So once again, the phasor for the sum of the sinusoids is the sum of the phasors associated with the individual sinusoids. We'll do one more example before we conclude. And in this case, I'm going to add up a sinusoid with amplitude 3 and phase pi over 4. And I'll subtract 4 cosine 2 pi ft minus pi over 4. So the frequency is the same. Hence, we can apply the phasor addition rule. We'll rewrite each of these sinusoids in phasor form. So the first one, I'm going to write as 3 e to the j pi over 4 times e to the j 2 pi ft. So my phasor is 3 e to the j pi over 4. And then I have minus the real part of 4 e to the minus j pi over 4 e to the j 2 pi ft. Well, the phasor addition rule presumes addition, not subtraction. So we need to take this minus sign and bring it inside of the phasor. And I can write minus 1 as e to the j pi and multiply that into 4 e to the minus j pi over 4. And I end up with 4 e to the j pi minus pi over 4 when I combine those terms. So the phasor of the sum, b e to the j gamma, is going to be the sum of the individual phasors. So that'll be 3 e to the j pi over 4 plus 4 e to the j 3 pi over 4. And you can do this algebraically if you really want, or you can use a computer or a calculator and you find that B is 5. This is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And then the angle ends up being 1.713 radians approximately. So I can write Y of T as 5 cosine 2 pi FT plus the phase 1.713. So the phasor addition rule says that the phasor of a sum of sinusoids having the same frequency is equal to the sum of the phasors associated with each sinusoid. And this is a very powerful result for analyzing a wide class of systems 